Hi guys, I'm Tasha from Travelin' Tash. I've been asked so many times, what's a British lady doing in Korea? Why are you there? How come you're still there? And how did you get to Korea? I want to talk about that today. I've recently had conversations back and forth with a friend, Kieran, and we've been fleshing out this topic and I want to record and share with you a little bit about my life story. <music> highly recommend that after watching this video that you check out more details from my website where I talk about this in depth and some of the things I'm not going to be mentioning in the video. The process to becoming an expat and living abroad has been a series of stages. Stages of gaining confidence to learn to live alone and live in a foreign place. And that self-confidence was built up over a period of a lot of years actually. It's funny because I see a lot of people today that just move to South Korea and they're like in their early 20s and they're like, yeah, I'm here to you know, be an English teacher or whatever. And they seem to have a lot of confidence like right off the bat. And the truth is, is that I never really started like that. I moved to Korea when I was 33 and up until or even including that time period I lacked a lot of personal self-confidence and self-belief and much of my journey has been gaining strength and self-confidence to actually believe that I could successfully live in a different country alone, a country that was not my own. When I was about 10 years old I was sitting in my grandmother's living room and a seed was planted in my mind about the kind of lifestyle I wanted to have when I was an adult. I was sitting on a sofa watching my grandmother's TV and I think it was Madrileños por el Mundo, which is a Spanish expat TV program that follows expats and where they live in different places around the world. And I remember that this program just drew me in and I was just like, oh. and then um, after that kind of initial kind of let's say planting of a seed. As a teenager, I remember watching, particularly with my sister, we'd watch programs about travel reps working in places like Spain or working in Greece and um, the kind of, kind of um, crazy kind of lifestyle that they got up to. A party lifestyle, which for me as a teenager was extremely appealing and completely unfamiliar because I was still a kid. So I began to think to myself, you know what, you know, I really would like to spend a lot of time traveling and living abroad. And I, it's, it's actually something that was kind of subconsciously planted in my mind. And as, you know, me and my, me and my siblings um, continued to visit our family in Spain, I began to gain more and more strength to potentially travel without my parents. When I was about 19, I met a fella called Matthew and Matt and I ended up dating. We ended up getting married. He was from Canada. At one point, Matthew was like, you know what? You're not particularly happy in England. I'm not particularly happy in England. We were both struggling financially. And we decided to just relocate and move to his home, which was in Ottawa. This was my first kind of adventure outside of Europe. I, up until then, I'd only really gone to Spain and France. And, you know, the opportunity of potentially living in a completely different country was very appealing to me, but in particular because I was, I felt like I was really stuck in a rut and um, working a retail job at that time, I was working in Harrods and, and I just, I felt like I just couldn't get a footing or I couldn't get a step ahead because my wages were so low. Uh, you know, as, as anybody that's worked in retail knows, it can be really challenging, particularly if you're working in London um, where travel costs are high and living expenses just generally are high rent is high and so we decided to move to Ottawa even though we ended up living in the basement of his parents' home for several months and the situation was hardly ideal 
I was already starting to be like, oh, you know, this is this is interesting. You know, I can actually live abroad, um, particularly because I had my husband there with me that helped give me strength that I could do this. I wasn't 100% alone. Even though in Canada, we speak the same language, you know, the dialect is different. I sometimes struggled to communicate with Canadians. Um, you know, pronunciation sometimes was an issue, particularly on the phone. And, you know, there were just all of these different things to get used to culturally. It was a very interesting learning experience for me and a learning experience within a culture that wasn't too different from my own. But ultimately, Matt and I's marriage didn't work out and as it began to dissolve, I decided to return to England. But when I got to England and I began working once again in retail, I realized that I had new ideas about what I wanted to do with my life. I began to broaden, <laughs> broaden my ideas of what I could do. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to go back to Canada. I'm going to do a diploma in beautician studies. And so this time, moving back to Canada on my own, no longer in a relationship, was actually a huge step for me to, to just be like, you know what, I've been there before, I know I have the strength to live alone in Canada. I'm already familiar with Ottawa. I'm going to apply to this course and just do it. Soon thereafter, I met Jeff and we were together for about the next four years. But in the interim, I completed this beautician course and graduated, graduated with honors, which began giving me a little bit of a confidence boost, which is something I really needed, particularly in my academic skills and my belief in myself as a writer. And then Jeff encouraged me to go on to do a undergraduate and nobody had ever really encouraged me to go to university before. And so another seed was planted and he was like, yeah, you can do it. And I was just like, really? You think I could successfully do a four year undergraduate? And he was like, yeah, sure. You're, you know, you're totally capable of doing that. And I was, that was a huge, huge moment that opened up for me the possibility of getting, you know, professional, <laughs> a professional education. Jeff and I ended up moving to Victoria on the other side of the country from Ottawa and he began a master's program while I did my undergraduate and in the interim we ended up breaking up but finally I gained my undergraduate degree. I also graduated once again with honours. I accomplished something I really wanted to do during that time and that was do a archaeological excavation. I was extremely interested in archaeology for a long time without really pinpointing or realizing that I was really interested in it. Jeff and I broke up but we remained friends and I was soon presented with an opportunity to completely change my life. I was working at a hotel at the time as a bartender, as a basically in a cocktail lounge, making martinis and you know lots of fun stuff, and um, it was a it was a really good uh, experience. But because I was made redundant, the hotel was going to be renovated. My boss said to me, you know, do you want to take care of her pet? And while well, she goes off, and she needed to go on honey on a honeymoon, and so. I, I said, yeah, I packed up my home, I put it into storage and I went to go and house it for her for six weeks. And the resulting effect of that was that I had a chance to really sit back and reflect on what it is that I wanted. I realized that I was presented with an opportunity to completely change my career, to get away from working in the bar industry and to completely refocus and go elsewhere. really identified that actually one thing that I always wanted to do was to go and work and live in Asia and I thought right this is my window of opportunity I've got no boyfriend I've got no job I've got no home I have the perfect window to just 
you know, grab a plane and go to a completely different part of the world. And so very soon I identified a job available in Korea. I realized that Korea had not only a good healthcare system like Japan and like many other Western countries, but also the low cost of living enabled expats, particularly teachers living in Korea to save money. And that's something that I really wanted to do because I wanted to travel and see the rest of Asia. I thought to myself, you know what? Let me just have a base point from which I can travel and see the rest of Asia. Little did I know that one of the stipulations in the contract would be that I'd only get 10 days vacation per year. And that's only something that hit home once I was already in it. And then I was asking for holiday time and it was like, hmm. So travel inevitably ended up having to wait until after I finished that particular contract. Um, I went to a particular city called Pyeongtaek, which is about an hour south of Seoul. And when I arrived to Pyeongtaek, my new city, it was very, very bright. There was neon everywhere. Walking down here in Myeongdong smells so delish, like um, fried banana, like Suzanne wants to get some fried banana, some egg bread. Um, there's just so many things here to, <laughs> to try and eat. What, what are you gonna actually get, Suzanne? My previous boyfriend, Jeff, he had said to me, Tash, you know, stick it out in Victoria. You know, you've got contacts here you know, it's gonna be much harder to start a new life in a new city on a new continent. Um, you know, why don't you, you know, you're a little bit older, why don't you stay here and make the best of living here? And I was just like, no, no, you know, I, I think that I can I can do it. And it's funny because when I arrived to, to Pyeongtaek in those first few uh, weeks, he said to me, Tash, you know, I'm so glad that I, you didn't listen to me because if you had, you know, you, you wouldn't be experiencing all this and, you know, you're cl clearly capable of starting a new life. And I think it was those particular moments that I just began to really feel, you know what, I can do this. And um, I'm not going to go into the details of what life was like initially. You can go to the article and I read more about what life was really like when I finally moved here to Korea. What I want to really highlight is that moving to Korea has been a series of steps where I've built more and more confidence. And, you know, that included gaining, <laughs> gaining academic qualifications. It included moving back and forth between England and Canada and various places in Canada before I eventually made the move to move to Korea and did it alone without a partner. Building that kind of self-belief <laughs> took about half my life and I know that some people don't need that but I was in a place initially where I just really lacked self-belief and self-confidence. I'm not going to say that my life is perfect, it isn't perfect, and it isn't exactly where I want it to be, but, you know, if I were a kid, if I go back to my 10-year-old self, and I said, you know, 10-year-old Tasha, you know, this is where you're going to be when you're 40, you know. I don't know if I would have been a little disappointed <laughs> with perhaps the size of my apartment but the fact that I live in Asia and I have quite a lot of freedom to pursue things that I really enjoy and I'm able to give a lot of me time to myself and I'm able to do so much I just I really 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 genuinely love what I've built and I don't regret all of those little steps that scaffolded to build my self-confidence and that's you know that's something that's a continual process as well I'm still building my self-belief and my self-confidence to to push myself to do things that I haven't done before but as many of you know I still have future plans to move on to see more of the world I want to move to Malaysia I want to see more I want to see Latin America I want to return to Mexico I want to return to Jordan 
there's so many things that I still intend to do and I've skimmed the surface of what it is that I want to achieve and what I want to see. I did go through a lot of challenges when I first moved to Korea because there were a lot of things that I was not expecting, both from the job itself and from the culture. And it was a very, very different experience from Canada, as I'm sure you can imagine. I couldn't speak the language and it's just a completely different mindset, different values or different principles. And there was just, it was so much to get used to that it was overwhelming. And these are things that I talk about in my article. I nearly went through a, not quite a nervous breakdown, but a body breakdown within the first six months of arriving to Pyeongtaek. And I actually had to return to Canada after just over a year. So you might be wondering, you know, well, how come you're back in Korea right now? I'm gonna recommend that you go check out the article on my website, travelintash.com. I'm gonna leave it in a link down in the description below. Check it out, you'll find out why I came back and why I'm still here five years later. Anyway guys, I'm going to say thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any particular questions that you'd like me to answer, drop it down in the comments below. What would you like me to tell more about? And go check out the article. Thank you so much and I'll see you on the next video, bye.